Hey, Huckster here again. Tried to get up this morning before it got too hot. I guess I've been at it for an hour or so. Now the sun's up. It's probably a quarter to seven. It's a beautiful day. There's more days over here. They're a mixed color, so we'll just be surprised what color they'll be. My elf of the ears are coming along. My tomatoes. I made another little tomato plant yesterday. Hadn't been around here to check on them yet. Let's see what they're up to. Little made a tomato spot. Yeah, they look like they they're gonna be all right. I didn't spend a whole lot of time making this little plot, but I think it'll do the purpose. I've got so many tomato plants that are just going bad. Uh, everybody says, "Well, you planted way too many seeds." S seeds were nothing. I mean, they were. You know, you get a, you buy a tomato at the grocery store, and there's hundreds and hundreds of seeds in it. And you still eat tomato and get the seeds. But I'm gonna walk down to my garden and show you. I had completed my last project I showed you when I was uh, on my last video. See you in the garden. This is where I've been getting my mulch. You can see the darker areas up there where I got it this morning. But, you know, I'm in this, amongst all these canes. And it's very plentiful in here, so I just rake it up and spread it out. So far, so good. I've had mulch on the ground for over a month and hadn't had any problems with it. So. I got a row of uh, beef steaks up there. My corn is coming along. My plans are once my corn gets harvested, I can have my tomatoes already established in between the corn. This is with my arm stretched up as high as I can stretch it, and it's still. A good foot over my head, and then there's one over there that's even probably six inches taller that's just beginning to open up. Glass sunflower. I love them. This one here is. I'll probably save this one for the seeds for next year. See, there's hundreds of seeds. Uh, I didn't save the seeds from last year. These came up volunteer that had fallen to the ground and when I plowed they were ready to sprout. I don't know how well you can see but I went down through the middle of the rows with my tomato plants in between the corn and I mulched them real good. Some of my tomatoes that I planted were fairly small. I already had some established in there that are between knee high and waist high. Got some zinnias there. But I'm excited about my corn. My corn got fairly mature before it ever tossed. And, uh, I'm just happy with it. But uh, I, I think I planted about 35 tomatoes in here the other day, plus I already had about 10 down there on the front, so that's 45 plus the 9 that I already had in there. I'm going to have a lot of tomatoes just on that end of the garden, and then on this side of the garden up here I've got at least 30 or 40 plants, and then around through the yard I may have uh, 20, and then back up there in that closed area I have at least 20. I'm hoping to be able to sell some tomatoes. Everything's grown organic. 
of the uh, harvest is about 20 uh, squash so far. I see the bees swarming around them. That's always a good sign. My neighbors are doing their best to kill off the bees. You know, this, everybody complains about bugs in the garden. Who cares? They're not going to do that much damage. I had a little damage with cutworms when I first planted these tomatoes up here. I put out a little cornmeal one time. That took care of the problem. I harvested about uh, 20 or so cucumbers so far. I've made some bread and butter pickles and some sweet pickles and I've uh, made some dill pickles, but uh, you know, those didn't turn out that good. But uh, I've been giving cucumbers away. Give all my squash away. I don't eat no squash. But yeah, my neighbor over to the left of me went over there the other day and he had five bags of ortho insect killer and it said on the bag kills up to a hundred insects. And he's spreading it everywhere in his yard. And you know, this the, the lack of bees around here is Ask that old man right there. He'll tell you about the lack of bees. Uh, you know, people just don't understand. Oh, I, want a, I don't want any birds in my yard. They don't understand they're killing the bees, the butterflies, the moths. All these things that help pollinate, uh, keep us alive on this planet. Now, Einstein said once the bees disappear, humans disappear within four years. I wouldn't doubt that. But you know, you get all these city slickers that want a perfect garden. They don't want to weed eat. They poison the ground to kill anything. I had one guy tell me he wanted to Spread weed killer all over where he's fixing plants so he'd kill all the weeds and then he's gonna plant on top of it. And I said, don't do that. Man, subjecting your family to all those poisons. But, you know, that's my bitching for the day, I guess. The sun's up and it's getting warm. I don't know if I can capture the sun there for you or not. But I'm going to go in and cool off and cook me some breakfast. Peace, love, justice, understanding, gardening, music, and friends. One other thing I forgot to mention. Sunday, I'm supposed to have four elders and two sisters come visit me. I'm trying to convert them over to a real Christianity. Uh, you know, Joseph Smith has many problems, in my opinion, when it comes to. You know, I heard the president of, uh, I think his name's Hinckley of the Mormon Association, say that uh, Christians claim that Mormonism didn't worship the real Jesus. He said that was true. We worship uh, the new Jesus uh, taught to us by Joseph Smith. And from what I can remember, Jesus said uh, something about not believing in a different gospel. And if you checked into Mormonism at all, you know it's a different gospel. But these, the Mormons come uh, by here weekly, and they have no argument other than what the church tells. One of the, one of the sisters told me that the reason Joseph Smith introduced plural marriage was because when Mormonism was first established, 
people hated them so they would kill the the husbands would stand in front of the families to protect them and they would be killed so other men would step in to uh, marry the woman and, and provide for the family. That's what the church has told her. Joseph Smith married women that had husbands. He married teenage girls. He was a adulterous, uh, scammy, pedophile. Thirty-year-old man marries a fourteen-year-old girl, or maybe even more than one fourteen-year-old girl. If he's marrying women that are already married, but the whole foundation of Mormonism is based on Joseph Smith. They have to give a monthly testimony, and their testimony says, "We believe that Jesus is the Christ, and Joseph Smith is the prophet." You don't make it to heaven through Jesus alone, you have to jump through all these hoops that Joseph Smith has set up. And at the judgment, there's to be Jesus, the Father, and Joseph Smith to approve you before you can enter. It's false. It's, uh, it's dragging these kids down a path at locomotive speed to destruction. And I'm going to do my part and everything I can to stop it. I'm not as knowledgeable as I'd like to be about the Bible. But I can jump leaps and bounds over these Mormon elders that go around uh, trying to establish their priesthood. They have, I mean, some of the things that they have to do is stated by Joseph Smith to make it to the celestial kingdom is you have to go to the temple, you have to be baptized in the temple, you have to be baptized for the dead. And I mean, there's such a list that he says you have to do. He puts you under the new law of Joseph Smith and claims that he did more for Christianity than any man that ever walked the earth. He names Peter, uh, John, uh, and even Jesus. He said Jesus lost thousands of followers. He has lost none. And he says, I boast about this. It's, a, it's, it's an evil cult type religion that comes to you as uh, regular Christians. And, and they, they, they're they winning in all areas of, of bringing in new converts. They go door to door like vacuum cleaner salesmen. They, they have all these programs for their youth. They take care of their members where many Christians don't. The people are standing by idly. I mean, I, I tell these people like it is, like just what I just said. I talk to these Mormons in just that way. And, I mean, you know, there's always something new that comes up. Because they, they don't know their Bible. They know their Book of Mormon, which was a uh, fantastic story made up by Joseph Smith about... Uh, Israelites coming over here around 600 B.C. and and uh, dividing into two factions. One dark skin, which was cursed, had the curse of Cain, and then the light skin, which were the good people, and the bad people killed off all the good people except for one Moroni, and he came to Joseph Smith, telling him where these golden plates were hid, that tells this whole Mormon story. No evidence has, has ever been found to prove this story to be true. Whereas with Christianity and the Bible, there's all kind of archaeological evidence. People in cities that actually existed, and Mormonism 
no names, no coins, no cities, no horses, chariots, skeletons, where two million men were killed in, in I think it was a mountain called Moriah in New York City. And the only person left was Mari I mean, uh, uh, Moroni that came to Joseph Smith. You can go to this, I mean, the, the Mormons have bought this mountain, and it's, they have, they put on shows there, reenacting this battle, and all, but nothing has ever been found there that is evidence that a battle ever took place there, much less where two million people were killed, where they had horses and elephants and chariots and huge stone cities and steel, and none of that's ever been found. Joseph Smith fabricated the story along with the Book of Mormons, the Book of Latter-day Saints. They have the money, they suck people in. And one of the things you have to do in order to make it to the Celestial Kingdom is pay your tithes. They have the money coming in. Well, like I said a while ago, I'm out of here. Peace, love, justice, understanding. Music, gardening, and friends.